Based on the uh, network diagram uh, which uh, we looked in the last lecture, I created uh, this uh, PowerShell script. So I strongly encourage you uh, to go uh, to the the scripts that were provided by the automated labs uh, to get a better understanding of different scenarios. Um, but um, I will leave it up to you uh, to explore um, more and um, I'll play with it uh, on these different labs. Uh, again, I create my labs, uh, which is purely based on those sample scripts. So you kind of um, use the code which you need and use it uh, for your purposes. Uh, so frankly, um, I, I, you don't need um, to understand all the scripts in there. Uh, if you can understand 5% of um, what's in there, uh, plus uh, whatever I am teaching in here, uh, that will be plenty for um, uh, solving a majority of use cases uh, when you um, try to achieve a lot of uh, different certifications uh, uh, that is based on Windows. Um, so this is uh, closely mapping to the network diagram I showed you uh, last time. Uh, so just uh, keep that handy, uh, just print it out uh, and then uh, so that you can uh, see what is uh, going on here. So um, again, I'm going to walk you uh, line by line and um, don't worry about um, copying this code from here. I'm going to give you the script. Uh, it should be available in the resources section. Uh, so just uh, grab it and then uh, paste it into your uh, own uh, PowerShell um, editor here. So what did we do here? So if you remember, uh, we downloaded uh, two ISO files. So um, for starters, um, this is the Windows 2019, this is the Windows 2016. Um, so uh, so the first line here uh, is, um, is, is required for any automated lab-based uh, scenarios. You need to define a lab. Um, so you can call this anything you need. Uh, I'm just calling it lab2. And um, I'm telling it, I want all the VMs uh, to be located in this D drive. So if you do not have a D drive, uh, you can just use C drive, uh, but make sure you have this path uh, already created. And I'm also telling that I want the reference size disk. So if you remember, um, AL creates a baseline images so that once uh, you have a VM based off that image, uh, any subsequent uh, uh, VMs are based on that image. So these are the various images I have in my labs. And also the default virtual, virtualization engine is Hyper-V, which is expected. So these are variables. So if you're not familiar with uh, what PowerShell is, uh, so when you say dollar, um, and then we are just assigning uh, these values uh, to these variables uh, so that you can use it later on in your scripts. So I'm just de defining a domain called Xclaris. Uh, you can name it uh, even Microsoft.local or Yahoo.com and it doesn't matter. Uh, so feel free to give a username um, and password. So that will be, uh, that'll be what uh, we will be using in your labs. So since this is going to be an Active Directory based labs, uh, you also have to define the domain definitions. Um, so again, I keep stressing this again and again. Um, do not worry about uh, what each command is doing. So um, the, that is the beauty of automation. Uh, once you have something that is working for you, uh, you just create the script and reuse it over and over again uh, without having to um, get into too much uh, details. Uh, but again, as you get uh, more and more familiar, um, you can easily expand this lab by looking at the sample scripts that is uh, provided for you there. So this is the lab uh, domain definitions and I'm using the domain which is defined here and I'm using the admin user. Again, it's just defined here and this will be the admin password. Um, so this is also required. Uh, this will be the local users uh, that will be created and I'm using the same login and password on each of the missions. This again, we saw in the uh, previous one and um, I'm defining um, a network or a virtual switch uh, which will be called net1 and I'm also defining the address space. So in the previous um, small lab we did uh, with, with and without the internet, uh, we let uh, automated labs decide on what uh, address space it wants to use. Uh, I think it used the 192.168.11 address space, uh, but you can use um, whatever you like, and then that is what I'm doing it here. 
And this line uh, we saw before, uh, which uh, we are using an adapter of Ethernet. Uh, check your um, internet settings to find what your uh, Ethernet is called. And this is an external switch. So this is an uh, interesting piece of code. Um, so this, if you think that you're going to be reusing a lot of uh, values in your um, labs, uh, you may want to define it in, in, this, um, in this way. So this will be applied uh, to each and every uh, VMs you defined in your labs. Um, so all these values, um, think of that uh, it will be added towards the end of this line. So you don't have to define uh, the domain name, the gateway, the memory for each of these systems. So it will grab the defaults um, from what is defined here. So that is why it is called the default uh, parameter values. Um, so it's a good place to put all the um, variables that you don't want to change. And you can obviously override it um, um, in your individual lines uh, if, you, if you want to change the memory, for example, on any of the missions. So for example, uh, let's say I want eight gigs of memory for my elastic stack, uh, which is a SIM solution, which we will be uh, taking a look briefly um, so that it may require a little bit more memory than usual. So I may give eight, eight gigs um, since I have um, a memory to spare here. So we are defining the DNS names. Uh, again, the DS, DNS names is based on um, the, um, the Active Directory, the domain controller's IP address. So that is what I'm defining it as, uh, the DNS server. And the domain name is uh, xclaris.com and the gateway. So the gateway, um, again, it's, um, we will be adding a router in, in this uh, lab as well. So what a router does is, if you go back to my network diagram, um, so you can see that um, the domain controller is um, is communicating with the router, uh, which gives us access to the internet. So every all the machines in the lab, uh, they talk to the domain controller, and the domain controller uh, finds the way uh, to find the um, router to give us access to the internet. Um, so that is why you need to define uh, the gateway address for all the machines, and the DNS will be mapped. Uh, to the Active Directory and the gateway will be mapped to the gateway, which will be the router. Uh, so if you have any problems with these concepts, um, look at my uh, other section where we did the Active Directory lab uh, manually. So that lab, um, I did that course, um, all these uh, lectures, uh, I think two years back, um, but everything is relevant. Um, so the goal of um, adding uh, these uh, set of lectures is to automate that whole process. So um, you might have taken uh, a few hours uh, to set that lab manually, um, but you're going to see how you're going to set this uh, same lab uh, without touching anything um, by automation. So again, these parameter values, uh, we will get back to again, take a look at it, it's fairly trivial. And um, so the one thing is, uh, since I'm defining uh, this operating system, so the default operating system for all these VMs is going to be the 2016 but uh, I'm I just want to have a flavor and so that these two missions the top secret and the elastic stack uh, is going to be using the 2019 server and I'm also telling each of those missions to use the network net one or the switch um, which is also defined here and uh, we are giving it as an individual IP address uh, so in the previous scripts we saw um, AL gave its own IP address in sequence. Uh, here, you have the ability to define your own IP addresses. So that is pretty much for these labs. Uh, and also, since all these um, default values are going to be uh, carried over to each of uh, these systems, um, it will be joining the domain because we are defining the domain name, the gateway uh, for each of these individual missions. So when this lab is set and done, uh, all of these missions uh, will be created. And not only that, it will be added to the domain, which is xclaris.local automatically. So this is um, and one thing which I haven't mentioned before. Uh, so automated labs comes with a lot of uh, predefined roles, uh, like um, like a, a root DC gives the domain controller role, or a routing gives the routing capabilities in, in that mission. And uh, similarly, we have like SQL Server, PKI. So you can add multiple roles um, for these labs. So Check the documentation. We'll be looking at few roles in this uh, course, uh, but for um, most of the cases, uh, this is what I've used a lot, and this uh, router is also one of the key things. 
so these two lines are something new uh, or uh, the especially these uh, roles uh, which is which is new uh, and also let's see uh, okay this one is also interesting the network adapter so the network adapter is based on these three lines over here so if you know a router it needs to have two interfaces one which is um, communicating to your local network meaning all these vms and the second adapter uh, should be talking to the internet facing so that is how it uh, provides uh, internet access to all your vms that are in your lab so in order to do that i'm just defining um, two um, an external switch and the net one and the internal switch is going to have this ip address and the external um, interface is going to have this ip address um, so Again, go back to my other section and then understand how, why and how you do this manually uh, with a router. So that is pretty much it. And uh, again, this line is also something new. Um, so when you do a detailed, uh, it is going to give you um, everything um, that uh, the script used, the passwords, what it did, the summary of the labs. Um, so how many lines is this? Um, so it's only 47 lines of code. So if you remove all the white spaces, let's say around 40 lines of code. So we're creating a complex lab based on the network diagram, which I showed you um, in just less than 40 minutes or 40 lines of code. And I'm going to start this code right now. And I'm going to come back in uh, 45 minutes or 30 minutes. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, depending upon your hardware speed, uh, RAM you have, uh, this lab uh, can t take anywhere from 30 to 30 minutes to one hour, right? Again, I highly recommend having uh, SSD drives with at least 16 GB of memory. And if you have 16 GB, um, try to adjust uh, these to just two gigs of memory uh, because um, you may not, um, uh, the mission, the host mission, I may not be able to work with that. So you're gonna come back in uh, 30 to 30 minutes to one hour and you're gonna be amazed um, with the power of this. So I'm going to show you what's in it right now, the Hyper-V hypervisor, uh, which, um, which is the, the server is the host name and we don't have any VMs running right now. So let's say you have the script and um, everything is, uh, it has all the prerequisites. I'm gonna hit the play button here and then I'm just gonna go for a quick jog and um, uh, take a quick shower and then I'll be right back and we will take a look at the lab um, once, once it's done. So just hang on, hang tight and uh, we will see you soon.